The Ministry of Defence, where the Defence Secretary, Mr John Knott, is about to make a statement. Good evening. Since my statement last night, our forces have been consolidating their successful attack on the high ground to the west of Port Stanley. We now firmly hold Mount Longdon, Two Sisters and Mount Harriet, all of which dominate the ground to the west of Stanley. Some 400 prisoners were captured, together with considerable quantities of equipment, including mortars and anti-tank weapons. It was important for the success of the land operation that the Argentinians were not able to assess exactly when, how, or in what strength we would attack. It is clear that the Argentinians greatly overestimated the extent of the casualties and damage resulting from their air attack on Sir Tristram and Sir Galahad on Tuesday. We wished them to remain uncertain about our strength on the ground and our capability to mount an early attack. None of this, of course, delayed the notification of next of kin, all of whom have been informed. Surprise was achieved in our operations and the progress made by British forces in their advance towards Port Stanley means that I can now give the official details of casualties from last Tuesday's attack. The landing ships were carrying large numbers of troops from the Welsh Guards and supporting units. 43 men died in the attack or are missing, presumed dead. 46 men were wounded and a number sustained minor injuries. There were also casualties among the crews of the landing ships. On Sir Galahad, three officers and two members of the crew were killed, and two officers and nine crew were injured. On the landing ship Sir Tristram, two members of the crew were killed. All the remainder of the crew are safe. The wounded are receiving treatment on board British hospital ships. The land operations were supported by Harrier attacks and naval gunfire from ships of the task force. There was also a successful Vulcan attack on Port Stanley Airport. These attacks made a major contribution to the success of our troops. However, in the course of the bombardment, the destroyer HMS Glamorgan was hit by enemy fire and nine members of the ship's company were killed and 17 injured. Next of kin have been informed. HMS Glamorgan sustained some damage, but she remains operational and is continuing her activities in the task force. In further operations today, an Argentine patrol craft was detected, attacked and disabled by sea harriers from HMS Invincible. Our successes on the ground over the weekend mark another significant step to securing the complete and final withdrawal of Argentine forces from the Falkland Islands. There is some way still to go, but the outcome is not in doubt. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just to recap briefly on that, Mr Knott was giving details of the casualties at Bluff Cove and Fitzroy, which the Minister of Defence has not been talking about over the past few days. 43 died of the troops and 46 wounded, and about half a dozen, slightly more than half a dozen, of the ship's crews of the Sir Tristram and Sir Galahad. In the operations over the last two days, Mr Knott said 400 Argentine prisoners had been captured and a good deal of equipment, mortars and anti-tank weapons had also been captured. And British forces are now on the high ground. He mentioned Mount Harriet, Two Sisters and Mount Longdon, just to the west of Port Stanley. And now back to our normal programmes. And the next scheduled news on BBC One is at nine o'clock. Well, over on BBC Two, in about seven minutes, The World About Us continues its report on an adventurous scheme for dealing with teenage offenders in America. On BBC One now, here's the Sunday film, a wacky and zany story of stunt driving in the Gumball Rally. 